It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. And welcome to another Can Crusher Spotlight. I am your host, Mark Martinez, and today's episode, this one was uh, pre-recorded, but nonetheless, these guys that I have on the show, the number one contenders for the Ohio Valley Tag Team Championship they are known as King's Ransom. These guys are amazing. Maximus and Leonis Khan, we find out about their history of, you know, wrestling. Just why they are in wrestling. What made them love wrestling. Why they are known as Maximus and Leonis Khan. And uh, who they're compared to on the WWE roster and who they liked. Guys, these guys were great. There's a big show tonight in Kentucky uh, where they are going to fight the War Kings and possibly take those OVW championships away from them and have them back on the show every week. Guys, we're getting a lot of wrestlers that just want to have their titles on their shows. You know, everybody's turning out to be Brock Lesnar winning a title and leaving. Well, the War Kings want to defend the OVW Championships on the show. Unlike Crimson and Jax Dane, who have now taken those OVW titles to Tennessee to tried and true wrestling. And we don't see them on OVW TV much. Bring them back, War Kings. Guys, I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did talking to these guys. They are a bunch of characters and just enjoy King's Ransom after this break. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And I would like to welcome the hottest tag team on the market right now. Uh, it's Leonis and Maximum Khan. They are the number one contenders for the OVW champions, the War Kings. And we'll touch on that in a bit. But you guys are unbelievable. You guys are so hot right now that Al Snow personally called me and said, drop what you're doing and get these guys on the show now. Oh, man. Thank you. Too kind. Thank you. That's right, baby. <laughs> so before we get into the OVW stuff, let's know more about Leonis and Maximus Khan. Okay? We're going to get right from the get from you guys were growing up. And what got you guys in wrestling? Um, it, it's it's weird, honestly. I could still remember the first time that I that I actually seen wrestling. I remember where I was at. Um, when I first seen my first WWF on, on TV, um, it was just one thing that we turned it on TV. And ever since we laid eyes on it, we just got hooked. And that just became our whole childhood. I know we, we made sure that, you know, we would never miss an episode of Raw and stuff like that. Um, and then we definitely practiced it on each other. Yeah, we got in trouble a lot of times, that was unfortunately. One- that was one of my next questions. How often do you guys beat the hell out of each other? <laughs> well, not anymore now because he knows what's up. <laughs> uh, yeah, now we're a little we're a little too big to uh, 
to to beat each other up. We have more fun beating up other people. So, so was it you guys are stumbling across it or a grandfather? Because you know everybody I talk to, myself included, the grandfather's always the one that says, "Hey, don't tell your mom, but you know, watch this." Yeah, it's funny. We actually, um, our uncle Pete is actually a big influence behind us getting into wrestling. Um, I know we would always go and spend the night over his house with our with our little cousin, and we would always have wrestling matches in the living room. We'd turn on the music and walk out like we were a wrestler, and he used to take us uh, on the floor on the, in, like, the living room. We used to, like, wrestle him and everything like that. Um, I would always win, though, so I don't know about that, but... Um, but, yeah, so he definitely was a big influence in that. Nice. So who did you guys aspire to be as youngsters? First, individually, and now since you guys are, you know, hottest indie tag team right now, who did you want to be as a tag team? Honestly, my favorite of all time is The Undertaker. That's um, not a bad pick. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, it speaks for itself. Um, just his his whole his whole gimmick, his whole persona. I've just followed him since since I can remember. Um, tag team wise, I would definitely say the Legion of Doom, and definitely. and then probably the Hardy Boys. Yeah, we like Legion of Doom. That was our team first. Uh, just like how they looked, we were just like basically in love with how they looked. He was Animal, I was Hawk. Um, and then the Hardy Boys came on, you know, a couple of years later when we got a little bit older, like an attitude era, and he was Matt, and I was Jeff. Um, so those were the two tag teams. And I kind of had a lot of different, like, heavyweight. Um, like, I was a fan of, like, a, a couple of different of the heavyweight guys. Um, I, like, you know, I would switch. I really liked Ahmed Johnson when he was in his prime. Um, it's funny cause he, he just always reminded me like he resembled like my dad. So like, like if I pictured my dad as a wrestler, like that he would be Ahmed Johnson, just like a big, <laughs> scary, uh, just an alpha guy, you know, that just wouldn't, that would just kick everybody's butt and stuff like that. But then I like the rock a little, I like the rock after Ahmed was gone. Yeah. But, who cannot like The Rock? You know, he he's just the most electrifying man out there, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, to, to keep going, where did you guys start your training? And then I'm going to actually slow back to, you guys mentioned Legion of Doom, and that's something I actually talk a lot, I want to talk about when we hit OVW. But uh, yeah. where did you guys get all your training? Was it just OVW, or did you do some more before OVW? Um, what actually happened was, um, when we were living in Las Vegas, um, for the past three years and we were in, you know, show business and, and modeling and stuff like that. And, um, in a strange way, um, wrestling kind of came back around to us and, um, we actually started training with, um, Jake, the snake Roberts, D'Lo Brown, and Sin Bodhi at their school called the Snake Pit out in Vegas. Um, we started that um, about a year and a half ago. That's where we got our, our all of our training from. Um, and then we moved over and we merged with FSW, which is Future Stars of Wrestling in Las Vegas. Um, we were out there, like I said, for about a year and a half training. And um, that's when Al Snow came and did a seminar at the Snake Pit. And so that's how we met him and, um, you know, stayed in contact with him and all of our coaches out there felt like him taking over OVW would be a big opportunity for us. And that would be a great place for us to go to further our careers. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty much where it started. And, and about four months ago is when we moved out here to Louisville and started um, going so, to OVW. So here we are back up in, in the north, back, back uh, freezing our butts off. <laughs> yeah, well, come to Pennsylvania, and then you'll really freeze your butts off, because we still, oh. we still have 12 inches of snow outside. Man. Uh, oh. Ugh. Right? It's, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. So you mentioned D'Lo, and you mentioned 
uh, Ahmed Johnson. And I know you they worked together so much in that Attitude Era as Ahmed taking on the Nation of Domination, fighting him. Did you pick his brain about that, you know, just since you're a huge Ahmed fan? Uh, not, not really. Um, I didn't really talk to them about that. I was just kind of like, I don't know, more like recently – um, like I knew I loved all man. The thing that sucked about that is he was only there for a little bit and kind of like recently as I, uh, you know, get further into my gimmick and evolve and everything like that. I kind of um, reminisce back on my childhood, like, uh, about Ahmed. And I'm like, uh, like, man, like I, I watch like old stuff of him and I'm like, man, like I really, really now I, like I remember like really really loving him and watching him wrestle so it was kind of more of a more recent thing where I look back on Ahmed um when I was at Snake Pit I was just more in wow of like getting trained by like Jake and like even D'Lo because I loved the Nation of Domination so um the Ahmed thing hit me a little bit a little bit recent so okay and how how was Jake because uh, I met him a few times when he did some indie signings. You guys know, have you heard of Big Time Wrestling? Yeah. Okay, he, he's come around our area, and he did, he did a signing, and he's awesome. He Just to pick his brain and talk to him for the 15 <laughs> minutes that I had, oh, my God, the stories, the stories that Jake has. And what did you get from him besides your <laughs> training training? Man, he, he is... He is awesome. You're right. Um, he's a character. He is. He's a he's a funny guy. He's a, he's a great guy. He helped us a lot. He tried to put the snake on us a few times. <laughs> Did um, you let him? Oh no. <laughs> no way. Yeah, he had us. We we've been over his house a few times, just getting the opportunity to watch film with him, travel to shows with him, travel to shows with like him. that four hour car seminar just picking his brain it's just like you know as you, when you're a kid you just have all these questions about wrestling and then finally getting to you know meet jake and then just <laughs> ask all those questions I, I felt like kind of like all right maybe we're asking him a little too much but um no they love it um they love when we pick their brains and he's a uh, He's a he's a great guy. He really he's, is. Uh, you know, we look at, we look to him like he's like the godfather to us of like wrestling. You know, um, he wasn't around the most, but when he was, it was just like super special um, to 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 listen to him because he was just so busy traveling, doing his, um, his shows and all that kind of stuff, his comedy stuff. Whenever we got around him, we just made sure we made the absolute most of being around him. Um, and picking his brain, and I mean, of course, like you could tell, like Jake's a character, you know, and uh, but he's a really, he is a really good guy. He really does. He's really helped us a lot. Um, so like we really appreciate him for that, and then um, like Sin and D'Lo, like they were the guys in there majority of the time, uh, helping us train and everything like that. But when Jake would come around, we all made sure we, we really listened up. So, I mean, obviously, he's Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. So. <laughs> right? Why would you not listen to Jake the Snake Roberts? So Exactly. So, uh, jumping back just a hair, was this always a dream to be a tag team together? I know you guys just said that, you know, you'd ro roll around on your uncle's anything, you know, out in the yard, out in the floor. But uh, was this always a dream to be a tag team or... You know, did you want to make it by yourself first and then the tag team? Um, I mean, it was cool to be a tag team. I guess it was all right. You know, I still want my shot. <laughs> uh, so, uh, anyways, yeah, yeah it, it was always a dream. Um, we've always been super close as brothers. You know, um, it's it's always been a dream ever since we started watching wrestling. We watched it together. So everything that we've seen, that we experienced, it was always together. And um, I guess it never even really crossed our minds, at least mine. Um, I've always wanted to be a tag team because it's always been a, a duo in a, in a, in the, you know, sharing the same journey. So yeah. unless, you know, he's. You know, yeah, as I'll say, man. I, still <laughs> yeah, I was unaware that he felt uh -huh. like this, but uh, <laughs> I've been stuck with you enough. 
I've been stuck with you long enough, man. But yeah, it's always been that, that's always been our dream, and especially um, our mom is really big on us you know, doing things together. So that, you know, it's it's really really weird. Like I remember being probably four four years old. I remember having a dream that we were tag teaming like the WWE, like we were professional. Like it was like years, like we were we were like adults. And I remember having a dream. I can still vividly remember the dream when I was like four years old of us like wrestling. It's weird. It was like we manifested it, you know, as a young at a young age. So it was the great segue, and I didn't even have to do it. You guys did it yourself. So was the King's Ransom always your idea and how did that come about as the cons <laughs> it was all my idea of on the brain it of course it was <laughs> why do i not understand that by now he's the heel of the group nah. here, man. but okay. um no i mean just like any other wrestler you know we we started somewhere else that that wasn't our you know first gimmick it was a lot of trial and error and you know looking back on um some of the old gear that we used to wear and, and whose idea was that? <laughs> it's some of the we're old on our first too. gimmicks. We're um, on that one uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it really didn't work at first. Um, but then, yeah, then we started to actually d gave us great advice. He actually, um, when we were trying to find ourselves in our identity, he, he asked us, you know, what would you like when you were, when you were a kid, the what, light bulb kind of went off. Yeah. And, uh, if, um, what would you like when you were a kid? What would you look up to? And then we started brainstorming and putting a lot of different things together and a lot of different elements that we liked. And that's and, pretty much how we came up um, with the King's Ransom gimmick. We were actually in, about to go into the gym. We were in the parking lot and the pre-workout kicked in and we just started brainstorming and came up with pretty much the whole gimmick and just pieced things together. So we took a bunch of different pieces from the different parts of our life pretty much try to evolve try to like uh merge it all into one type of deal um so it took it was a process you know and, and it was kind of frustrating because um we kind of got everything mechanically pretty quick you know like we they drilled us and we practiced non-stop about four or five days a week and the mechanics and stuff came quick, like we're ready for matches, but we're kind of like, well, who are we? You know, like that's like in, in basically said, like, you know, our coach said, like, who else do you have more experience being than yourself the last 25, 26 years, you know? So that really hit. And just like their advice really helped. And we just started putting pieces together, you know, time after time, week after week. And then we just kind of came up with like something really, really, um, unique and i'm like man i'm like we got something here you know we have something and you know we've been throwing stuff at the wall and stuff started to stick and um you know now here we are it evolves every you know every day you know we have new ideas every day and the gimmick evolves and evolves and evolves so i'm looking forward to see um you know where exactly we go with it so tell me one of your gimmicks wasn't the new new rockers because I couldn't imagine either one of you guys in neon. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> uh, that's actually funny. I can actually show you a, a picture of us looking something uh, in a little bit of neon. But no. but uh, now what I tell you, <laughs> you I'll take the, I'll take the blame for that. Me? Why I'll, you gonna embarrass me on this radio station? <laughs> I'll take the blame for that. Uh, yeah, that was definitely that one was my idea, and that's funny I because was like, that's what we did look. I like. was like, you know. Worst case scenario, we're all black. When in doubt, we're all black. You can't wrong, you know, go wrong if we're in all black. It's all black. You know, you look right. good in it, you know, but, but no, we have to, you know, look like a bunch of damn highlighters, <laughs> sharpies, you know, <laughs> and I'm just, yeah, that, that ain't me. They can't all be winners. That, that wasn't me. Man. All right, well, we found our, found our gimmick now, so that's all good, okay? <laughs> I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this gimmick definitely is killing it. I, I I love it. I was thinking maybe you guys were into you know Greek history or something with the Leonis and Maximus, the cons. So it, it, it's a win-win for sure. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get on to the OVW stuff, throw everything out the window with 
the War Kings right now on any main roster. Uh, note, I said any main roster. Oh who, yeah. Who do you want to fight in time? In time, honestly, I would say probably the Usos. We get compared to them a lot, and um, everybody's always saying, "Oh, you guys, I could see you guys against the Usos." That's yeah. kind of what our fans say a lot. Our fans always say at the show. I want you guys, you know, win the SmackDown or Raw or whatever titles against the Usos and and this, this, and that, and they're brothers, and I feel like we're brothers. So there's that's, a lot of you know resemblance as far as that. It's like two real brother tag teams against each other, um, and you know they've been there, they've been doing their thing. Uh, their name speaks for themselves, and I think that um, you know we can just. Prove that we're better brothers than them. <laughs> <laughs> to clear it up or to put it on record, are you guys related at all? Um, unfortunately, yes, we are. Unfortunately, <laughs> what? No, not you two. I mean, oh. to the Usos, to the. <laughs> no, not I, everybody knows you two are related. Oh, okay, okay. Um, actually, no, we're not. Um, we met their, they have a younger brother, uh, Saifa Fatu. He wrestles at, in Vegas right now. So we met him and talked to him a few times. Um, he's a real cool guy. He's a big up and coming guy, but no, we're no, not, not related. we're not related to them. Okay. Just to, just to clear it up in case anybody was like, always oh, picking your we're brain. Not, we're not Samoan. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Let's move on to where you guys are now. You are the Nightmare Cut champions, which means you're number one contenders. Anytime, anywhere in OVW, you guys can call the shot to get the tag team title match. But yes, the, sir. But the War Kings have kind of been ducking you one at a time. They have. They have, man. They have. Um, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't blame them, you know. We're a pretty good competition. I'm sure they would agree with that. Um, we've been ready since we won the nightmare cup. You know, we moved here from Vegas for one reason only, and that's to be the best at any level. Um, you know, one week Crimson's there and Jack's Dane isn't there. The next week Jack's Dane's there. Crimson's not there. Every week we both been there. So damn right. So we've been ready. I was ready yesterday. I was ready a week ago, a month ago. I'll be ready tomorrow, next week. It doesn't even matter. I mean, we could go right now <laughs> in this living room. It really doesn't matter to me. Yeah, yeah, we're we're just we're here. We're ready. We're here, ready, waiting. Make the match. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. But you have two other stooges that are always on your tail in the entourage. Oh, what? Man. what Every time you guys go to capitalize on this, Shiloh and DL3 just happen to be around. I mean, last week we saw that you kind of took care of them, but what's what's going on? You know, they're kind of – they're like kind of like those gnats at a barbecue. You know what I mean? They're just there. They just don't stop, you know, bugging, you know, and you just kind of have to slap them a couple times, and they keep coming back, and you got to slap them again, and – you know, it's just that kind of deal. Um, and it's just annoying. Yeah, it's, they're just, you know, they're just annoying. So we just got to embarrass them every once in a while, like whenever they feel feel up to it. It's no big deal. I mean, I, I enjoy it, to be honest. And honestly, so. honestly, as long as we get our title shot, they could be thrown in there too. We could have a triple threat tag team for the title. It doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter. Is that going right to Dean Hill? Should should we tag him in this too? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not like we haven't been in Dean Hill's office before. So we can go back and we can tell him again. <laughs> you guys were also the first two in the Nightmare Rumble. How was that facing off against each other to start that? Man, that was actually that was that was an experience. Um, yeah, I had to, um, like, I had to take it easy on them a little bit. Um, I knew my mom was watching um, back home, so I didn't want her to 
see me um, destroy her oldest child on TV <laughs> in front of everybody. So, you know, I gave him a little bit, you know what I mean? So, you know, I had to take it easy on Take it easy on Yeah. Well, yeah, about that. Um, no, it was all, it was, it was awesome. We're both warriors. We're both competitors. You know, we've been competing our whole lives with each other. You know, um, there's nothing wrong with a little friendly competition. It was different, you know, facing off with him in the ring. It's like looking at a split image of yourself. Um, he knows stuff that I do. I know what he does. Um, and yeah, obviously our mom didn't like that very much, but we're competitors. Is we're competitors at the end of the day. We love each other. We're competitors. and But at the end of the day, the heavyweight championship is on the line or heavyweight championship shops, shot is on the line. You know, it is what it is. So Plus, didn't you just want to pop him in the mouth for being the little brother that's always popping off one time? Hey, I wouldn't say little brother. I'd <laughs> well, I'd say younger. Brother. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Ah. Uh... Yeah, it felt really good. Because you both can get heat with me soon. <laughs> say it, say it, shoot you. Oh, yeah, I, I love, uh, you know, getting a shot to, you know, pick up my my younger brother every chance I can get. So. Yeah, I've been doing it my whole life. <laughs> so one more quick question before I let you unload on War Kings. Uh, you guys have been in the business a little bit now, but what – would you tell aspiring uh, youngsters that want to be wrestlers? Give them uh, a tad bit of advice to stick with them from now until they are where you guys are. Um, the advice that I would give, it kind of, I kind of use it for everything in life, and it really does. Um, I mean, it, it is the truth, at least you know to me. And what's got us to where we're at is. No matter what you do, you know, if you decide that wrestling is what you want to do, no matter what, give it, give it your all that you can possibly give it, give everything that you can possibly give, um, or don't do it at all. That's how I look at things. Um, you know, we got into this because we want to be the best in the world. You know, we want to be in the WWE. Um, we want to make it to the top, to the top stage and the top level. And you just have to know that if those are your goals, you're going to have to, you know, do something that you've never done before. And it's not easy. And there's there's thousands of other people that are giving their all. So if, if you're not if you're not giving 100 percent, you're kind of I feel like wasting your time. Um, whenever you have a goal or a dream in mind and this being our childhood dream, it's it's all or nothing. All or nothing. Damn, took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I told you that, didn't I? <laughs> Always a smarter one. Always a smarter one. <laughs> Always a smarter one. So, you guys have a match coming up with War Kings. Real yeah. soon. Oh, yeah. And now we're going to revert back to Road Warrior Animal has been named to be around OVW. And you see him in other, other feds coming out with the War Kings. I know you looked up to him, but being an idol and all, you pop him in the mouth to get the uh, Crimson and Jacks as well? Um, You know, like you said, you know, we looked up to him. That was an idol of ours. Um, But that's when we were kids. We're right grown, now, we're grown now. We're grown so. men. We're our own favorite wrestlers. So, unfortunately, if Animal gets in the way of our us chasing the title, um, so be it. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know, well, it, it just it just is what it is. All right, guys. And I'm sure he would respect that. You know, he's a former tag team champion. Oh, yeah. He knows. He knows. He's he knows a Hall of Famer. He should know the business. Uh, Exactly. So yeah, we have no problem with um hitting him in the mouth. A any means times. any means necessary, baby. That's even better. I like that one. Uh real quick, where can we find you? Spit out all your social media. What are you guys up to next? And I heard there's a special pre order coming out, huh? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, my social media, my you know, you could find me on Facebook or on um, Instagram. You could find me at Morgan Hill two one four. Um, you could find him on Instagram at Critty Hill. Um, and then that'll you know take take you to our pages, Leonis Maximus Khan. Um, and then what we're up to, we actually on February twenty eighth, I believe we have a show in Pittsburgh with Sin Bodhi. Um, I think Ray Phoenix is going to be on that show. Um, a couple other guys, but I know, yeah, February 28th, we have a show there. Um, and yeah, then, if you're in the Pennsylvania area, you know, it's in Pittsburgh. So come check us out the 28th. I believe the bell times, what, 830? 830. Doors probably open at 630, 730-ish. So you got you'll get a chance to watch us um, tear somebody up. <laughs> so, yeah, and then. Side note, I will be there, so I'm going to make sure I hunt you guys down. Uh, You'll see us there. You'll see us there. Um, Yeah, and we actually, we're starting, you know, a lot of fans have been wondering and asking, um, and we're finally getting, you know, some merchandise made. So right now we're taking pre-orders for our, you know, first, our original um, King's Ransom t-shirts. you could order those. You can go if you follow our, you know, social media, our Instagram pages. All the information. All the information's on there on a post. Um, so you can, you know, pre-order the shirts that you, if you want to, you can get um, pre-order them, and we'll take a 25% off, and actually um, hand autograph those pre-ordered shirts, um, kind of to, you know, to get the ball rolling. Um, and, and we just appreciate everybody and all the fans for showing their support. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, you can go to our social media pages and find all that info there. Um, this Friday we have, you know, we have the big show and we're going to be there. Um, so, and then, you know, Wednesdays are our TV taping. So, you know, we got a pretty busy week ahead, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah, guys, thanks for taking a few minutes for being on Can Crushers and best of luck Saturday. We'll be pulling for you. Love watching you every week on Wednesdays. And then uh, I'm going to hook up with you guys in Pittsburgh for sure. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. You the man. Thank you, sir. So the Usos, the Usos are who these guys would love to go to the penitentiary and beat the snot out of. And as we talked, you heard they have some comparison with them. Some people thought that they could have been related, so we kind of... Ask that question. And they are not related, folks, just so you know. But their match that they would want to have right now is King's Ransom versus the Usos. Guys, you have to check these guys out on social media. It's King's, K-I-N-G-S, Ransom. Now, the S in Ransom is a dollar sign on Facebook. So get on there. Like them. Pre-order your t-shirt from them. And on February 28th, go to Pittsburgh if you're in the area and watch them at WrestleRex. But make sure, make damn sure that every week you get on OVW on YouTube and watch these guys perform and do what they do because they're not going to be on OVW long. They're going to be on the network in time. I, I said it during, you know, Wednesday's show. These guys are amazing. They have the look. They have the skills. They are just that damn good. King's Ransom. Like it because you're going to love them. Guys, have a wonderful week. We will be back Wednesday with our normal show. You know, me and Paul drinking beer, talking wrestling, and see who else calls in in chats. We will continue to have these spotlights as next week we will be having another OVW superstar. But until then, remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. See you guys Wednesday. <laughs>